It goes without saying that for an empire stretching across Europe, the Near East, and North Africa, getting information about the far-flung provinces was absolutely crucial to the effective running of the central government. But how did this actually function? What was the Roman mail service like? Well, seeing as how the Roman Empire was around for centuries, it obviously went through some changes, so let's pick the late Republic and the early Empire, basically the Age of Augustus as our period of examination. The government of this period, at the local level, was made up of town and city officials and local magistrates and then provincial governors and, if they were around, military personnel. The central governing bodies, the senate and the bureaucracy of the emperors, were located in Rome and they essentially relied on the locals fairly heavily, including vassal kings and vassal states, but communication was still required. And that came in the form of letters, an extremely famous example being the letters sent between the Emperor Trajan and Pliny the Younger, governor of Bithynia, between 111 and 113, concerning what to do with the Christians in the province. From the late Republic, in terms of letters, we of course have the famous vast collection of the Senator Cicero, as well as Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic War, which was partly written on the basis of reports and letters he was receiving about Gaul and how the war was proceeding. The two men were actually in contact with each other, not surprising due to their standing in the late Republic and due to the fact that Cicero's brother, Quintus, was a commander, a legate, in Caesar's army. Now, as the Gallic Wars were wrapping up, Caesar invaded Britain and he took Quintus with him. Cicero and Quintus had been in constant contact with one another, they exchanged letters relatively frequently, and we have a record of Caesar telling Cicero not to freak or otherwise be worried if he doesn't hear from Quintus for some time, because they would of course be across the channel. What that tells us is that the Roman postal system was a highly effective institution which managed to get information from the frontiers back to Rome even during war when it was probably most important. But, information didn't just flow one way. Caesar tells us in the Gallic Wars, for example, that his troops would often get wind of people in Italy spreading rumors and otherwise denigrating their commander. So how did this whole thing work? Well, like all things in history, especially ancient history, there are things we definitely know, things we sort of know, and things we don't know. So describing how this worked is going to be something between a concise explanation on my end and frankly a guess based on the secondary literature done from what little evidence we actually have surviving. Obviously, there needs to be the document, the letter, military order, etc. And these could be written on multiple different types of surfaces. The Vindolanda tablets, for example, discovered at the Roman fort of Vindolanda in Britain, are tablets formed of wood, which comprise military orders, letters home, military honors, and one actually is even an invitation to a birthday party, and the writing was done using ink. But wax tablets, which were etched, could also have been used, as well as papyrus, animal hides, pottery, stones, etc. The people carrying the letters would have been couriers, many of whom could have and would have been paid by the government or the military, or by private citizens, or towns, anything like that. Or, if you had a friend going to the general area the document needed to be sent, you could give it to them. Or, the Roman kinship structure being what it was, you could have given it to a trusted slave. If, however, the letters were some kind of intelligence or important document, it would have been written on papyrus or some sort of hide, rolled up into a scroll, and then sealed with ink bearing a mark of some sort. The orders and letters of Augustus, for example, bore a sphinx as his personal mark. In the late Roman period, these would have been carried by the Agentes in Rebus, the imperial courier service, and it's likely that the early imperial and late republican period had something similar, but as far as I'm aware, that isn't fully known. So, how was this done? Well, the Antonine itinerary is a well-known roadmap of Roman Britain, from around the middle of the 2nd century, possibly put together by the Frumentari, the Roman Secret Service and Intelligence Network. It lists a series of way stations and the distances along roads between those stations and towns, so these maps are things that certainly would have been employed, and we have more than a few surviving, of which this is really just one example. 
So these were part of the famous Roman road system, as well as the system of harbors, docks, and sea lanes that the Romans used. But on the mainland, there was the Cursus Publicus, a transport system maintained by private citizens and specifically created by Augustus and partially based on Persian antecedents to facilitate the easy movement of couriers and goods, provided, of course, that you had the right documentation. Even if you didn't have that, though, there were still other roadways you could use, although they didn't reach everywhere in the Roman Empire, and provided you didn't get mugged or kidnapped or something, how long would this take? Well, we know of two occasions where Julius Caesar sent letters from the war zone in Britain to Rome, and apparently it took just under a month something like 27 days to be exact. On a good day, on flat terrain, it was apparently possible to cover something like 25 miles, and of course, in tougher terrain, it would be slower. Caesar's army could march, if we are to believe the records, and I don't necessarily see a reason why we shouldn't here, 15 miles a day along the roads while weighed down with their kits, essentially about 16 Roman miles, and he famously moved his army 218 miles from Ravenna to Rome in three days, with roughly nine hours of marching each day, so about eight miles an hour, slowed down by stopping to eat or just to rest, but also driven on by the presence of their leader. Couriers, unless an imperial employee or unless carrying urgent news, likely didn't have to move as quickly, but there you have it, a general picture of how news got around in the Roman world.